the 29th of August. So starting off slowly, we're about uh, 15 hours into the day, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then, well, <laughs> I don't really seem to be getting out any earlier than, than 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I guess there's a lot to do inside before I leave. And so it takes me a while to get out. slowly right now. Here we go. Let's get into high gear. Anyways, I was watching Lionel last night and he finally breached the, uh, the barrier and started talking about religion. But religion is not necessary. Gnosis. Gnosis is a religion, as you should say, is a reflection of Gnosis. And you have to understand what the understanding of Gnosis means. And, and then they talk about the beyond. It means that there's the beyond the physical. So our physical life is maybe, let's say, on the numbers a hundred years. A lot of people aren't going to live that long. They don't live a hundred years. They have maybe, you know, more or less a hundred years. So that's the way we approach it. So then what's after it? Well, the atheists who are materialists, these are your humanists, uh, your secularists, who are all from secularism, humanism, these are all religions. And when they, they became religions after 1945, because physics had demonstrated, not religion, physics had demonstrated that you could not determine anything with any degree of certainty. This is why you have a probabilistic universe inside of uh, quantum mechanics and quantum physics. Uh, the probability exists because we can't determine things absolutely. And as we talk about infinite, infinite universe, infinite knowledge, you only approach the knowledge, you never actually achieve it. And this is what produces religion. Religion is the belief in something. And the other, again, the belief, the religion, is, 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 does not have to have a belief in God to be a religion. It's just you do things, you, you act. The religion is how you act, how you behave, and you do, you do things according to your belief. And everybody does it. There are people who, let's say, with, even without belief, they believe they, they believe a, a certain shirt is lucky for sports. They'll wear that shirt. Or they believe that, 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 that not washing a particular set of clothes for a, sport, or a sports program or for a, uh, a game or whatever whatever they are playing or watching, they'll never wash those clothes because it's bad luck. And that's actually, that's, that's, those are religious practices. Because it's based on a belief. So we undertake our understanding of religion and bring it into the world. And he was sort of starting off in a very, uh, in a gruff tone, but you got to understand where, he, where he's coming from. You got to understand, you understand where Lionel Brown is coming from. He was a Catholic schoolboy. And the Catholics are very rough on the religion because it, it, it's, it's, well, it's, it's basically pagan. Where there's a lot of punishment if you don't follow certain laws. And the laws are not to be argued with or trifled with. The laws are considered to be absolute and fall unque without question. This is what he was brought up with. This is how he was taught. This is why he is a retired Catholic. He's done, he's done enough of his obligations as a Catholic that he no longer has to go to church. So there's no sense of, there's, there's no, the entire religion of Catholicism, for those who grew up with the family, there's no love there. It's all a sense of duty, and as long as you maintain that sense of duty, then that everything's fine. But what happens once you start questioning the sense of duty, you start looking beyond, 
not the robot large, a large chunk of the problems start popping up. But the thing is that while most religions are like that, do as I say, do as I say, not as I do. You know, it's basically follow my particular dictates. Uh, you'll see a lot of the same thing. You'll see people who are who, who will fall off. But you have another sense that is not necessarily brought out as much. And this is on the eastern side of things. And this is particularly that to do with Christianity, Eastern Christianity, which is about choice, not about it's about it's about free will, the choices that you make in life. So what happens on the east, unlike the west, there is no plan, there is no law. What there is is a choice, and how you behave will determine what your relationship is with God. That, and that's as far as it goes. People always talk, they toss off the word sin and, oh, it's nothing, it's just a sin. Well, you have to go into the root word, you have to go into the origins of the word to understand the terms, the word sin comes from the, from the full word sinister, the shortened version of it. And sinister behavior is evil behavior. Is designed specifically to, to be evil, and you have to be con more often than not you have to be conscious of this particular evil. The thing is, a lot of people aren't conscious of the evil they do. They they they, they they'll do evil, they'll do sinister, uh, unknowingly because they're not aware of the things that they're doing are sinister. So there's a knowledge of sinister, and then there's an, a lack of knowledge of sinister. They say they go well, rogue behavior. And rope behavior is not sinister in, in itself. However, it can indeed be sinister under the right conditions, uh, even if the person is not aware of it. And so the, the, the beyond part typically is advertised in most religions as something that is better than what we have now. So in other words, our life, as compared to what we have, uh, is compared to the beyond, is relatively short, because you know infinite time is much longer than a hundred years. So once you become immortal and you are now free of particular woes in life, now you can live a happier life. This is where you have the happy hunting ground, you have Xanadu, the land of milk and honey, uh, a number of different things. Describing the beyond is better and a happier place. But in the meantime, in our, in our physical life, we're given free will. We choose the path we're on. But he saw this guy being anxious and he sort of decided to move around. Decided to wait for the other, the, the, other, the other guy to go. And I have a video of this, and as I said, I think I should start uh, sending these videos in to the police and letting them know. Okay, here, here's another bad driver. Uh. As it, the choices that we make. often determine what happens in the world and in society. So a large chunk of what's going on now, the horrors in the world, is not because of what God is doing, it's because of what we're doing. And the thing is, you'll see this even, even with this current situation here, where people are you know, everyone calls them idiots and stuff like that. They're backing down and they're they're getting their uh, they're getting their uh, vaccination. And it's not that the, the vaccination can be open our bad. It is what happens is the government's been screwing around and people and some of these scientists have been screwing around so much with the vaccines 
that it's now very difficult to determine whether a vaccine is safe or not. So it has nothing to do with, oh, we don't want to vaccinate people. It just what happens is that is the stuff you're injecting into your body safe? And that 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 result can't actually be answered because you don't know whether it's safe or not. So this is the whole issue: is that with with the with the issue of safety gone, in terms of you know it's not safe and we don't have an idea whether it's safe. And most of the data that's being put out is absolutely incorrect. Even the approaches to data. Is not scientific, even though they say it's scientific. No, what happens? You have two ter- you have two sciences. You have uh, real science, which is objective. Then you have re- the religion science. So most people when they talk about science. Oh, this is scientific. They talk about religion. It's about what you believe. It's not actually about the research itself. So once again, this is religion, but at the same time, it's not everything that Lionel said it was. about uh, 21 hours and 30 minutes that's the time I checked when I left and we're heading on our way back and we're going to continue on with our conversation on religion and more particularly its relationship to Gnosis because the two aren't necessarily the same thing Gnosis is why you do what you do in religion. Religion is the things you do. But Gnosis is the why. It is the knowledge that is beyond. A little slippery on the road. Almost lost my uh, balance, but anyways. bumpy road. But again, with the camera that was bouncing around the way it is, you can hear how bumpy the road is. So you have to take these roads a little bit more gingerly, particularly when it's been raining up, and it's, the ground is still wet from the rainstorm. So. Lionel sort of, but then if he doesn't know this stuff, he's not going to be able to go into it. He's not going to be able to sort of explain why Gnosis is the way it is, or why religion is the way it is, if he, don't, if he doesn't know Gnosis. Uh, uh, the Gnostic understanding of things is fundamentally different than the intellectual. And this is why the intellectual, the Medicaid is considered to be the lower end of the intellectual spectrum. Uh, and Gnosis is at the higher end. Because there are things that apply in Gnosis that don't apply in terms of the intellectual, because there are certain things uh, in terms of observation that are just fundamentally beyond uh, the intellectual. And you see them, you witness them, you experience them, but by the same token, you can't explain them. In other words, there is no intellectual or knowledge that will sort of give you an explanation as to what's actually going on. And this is what what causes a chunk of the problems is that you have this sort of sense 
care about here. There's a line of wetness. Here is a side part of the road that's kind of slippery. Not all the roads have the same grip on them, so you have to be careful as you go over things it, it, to avoid the slick parts. So you do have to slow down a little bit. And there we go. The part, food part of the slickness. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it around 40. I'm not going to push it because it seems to be a little slippery out. Uh, and so if you don't know the gnosis that's behind the religion, then you're not going to understand why people do what they do. And I guess most of these gnosis, as I said before, they're, they're Gnostic. In, 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 they're pagan in their understanding. And there is an angry war god above them that they have to appease. So a large chunk of what you see in warfare is because of their Gnostic sense that war is indeed holy and appeasing and, and pleasing to their particular god. So this gives you a large chunk of what hap why what happens, why the things that happen in war are actually happening. Sometimes it's a mouthful to say to, you know, to understand what's actually happening and what's going on. But, you know, that's, that's the way things are. I mean, in certain sense of the, uh, certain cases of gnosis within the sort of the the pagan sphere, uh, rape is part of uh, part of the ceremony. I mean, that's what a black mass is. A black mass includes rape, uh, and it's part of their ceremony. So you wonder, well, why do why does rape exist? Because it's part of a religious ceremony. If you're on the left-hand path, and this is what the Clintons are, this is what a lot of the Democrats are. The left is the left-hand path. Whether they realize it or not, they are left-hand path. And a lot of the things they do, they seem illogical, or in many cases we say downright demonic. And this is what uh, this is what Dostoevsky was pointing out when he wrote the bo book Idiots, and then he wrote the second book, sort of a companion to it, called The Possessed. And he's talking about the, uh, the democratic left. He's talking about the leftists. And he compares them to basically the demons who were cast out of the man and allowed to go into the herd of pigs, the demon called Legion. Uh, and the pigs went crazy and basically ran off a cliff into a, 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 the ocean below, the body of water below, and drowned. It wasn't that someone made them do this in terms of someone drove them there, in, you know, in terms of the herder or whatever. These were the demons themselves, destroying themselves, the, destroying the body that they were in. And so we can understand is that there is such a thing as demonic possession. And so what happens is that this is what Dostoevsky is talking about, the possessed, saying the left-hand people, the left-hand side, the leftists, are possessed. And the thing is, the whole point of the left and this is where we get into what, what the right is in the right-hand path. The right-hand path can be equally as possessed. But they have the pretense. They think they're going in the right direction. They think they're being good, they're being kind, and so on and so forth. And you can see this in Western Christianity. Western Christianity is actually left-hand path at the top. But down below it uses the path of Christianity to hide itself. So the sheeple are told to be good, to not be evil, not be sinister. Where the upper, the upper portion are free to do as they please. So this becomes a large portion of what goes on 
with hypnosis that is really not understood by most people. But the thing is, you go back to books like Dostoevsky, and they, these are difficult reads. It's not you're not going to deal with, get to Dostoevsky overnight. He's a significant read. Uh, it takes it to get to Dostoevsky's books, and this is the one, the way you want to do it. You want to look at uh, uh, the brothers Karamazov. The character you want to focus on primarily is uh, Father Zosimas. And this will give you an understanding of the Eastern path of Christianity. Um, and again, an understanding, not the understanding. From there, you want to move to uh, the book, The Idiot. Then from The Idiot, you want to go to The Possessed. And the final book, the final point, is the book, Crime and Punishment. And you take the character as Western society. He is a humanist. And humanists are secularists, and, and so on and so forth, and they have no belief in God. The end point that they describe in the, at the end of the book is random destruction followed by, followed by suicide. And this is what you see in society on the left-hand path. The left-hand path describes the exact same thing and because a person can indeed reflect the behaviors and attitude of a society, this is what occurs with the character in uh, Crime and Punishment. It now, the, that character now suffices and becomes the type, the model, that reflects the current society, our current humanist and atheistic society. And this is why we are doing what we're doing why we're seeing what we're seeing. Uh, a large chunk of that comes in, in, in that explanation. But again, these are difficult reads. The whole line I told you from, from Brothers Karamazov to The Idiot to uh, The Possessed, then from The Possessed into Crime and Punishment, that's about two, two and a half years worth of reading.